ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Brendan Green, or Player Unknown, and I created the Battle Royale game mode found on Arma 2, 3, and H1C1, and now on Player Unknown Battlefield. And I'm Fiona Fox, and I'm here with Fiora, Girl of Hi. Pain. Hi! I blow stuff up. True story. Explosions are great. We like explosions. You do like explosions? I like explosions. I love okay. explosions. We're adding lots of more stuff into the game, like C4 charges maybe, so you can rig up cars to explode remotely and all kinds of I want to drive amazing. a Jeep, jump out of the Jeep, and have it just go into someone and blow them up. Oh, no, no, no. See, I'd be more subtle about it. I would drive a Jeep to somewhere where I know they're going to come by, play C4 all around it, and then just sit in the bush and play. Oh, no, exactly. You just wait until someone gets into the car. Bye-bye. Perfect. Yeah, cars are definitely traps in this game. Like, if you see a car in the open, you're gonna die. Yeah. You're gonna die. So, so, so we have cars and guns, and you're talking about adding C4. What else has not yet been added? So for the moment, we have, we don't have a lot more to add. We have a few more vehicles, we have a few more uh, weapons to add. Uh, Feature-wise, we want to add vaulting and climbing, much like Battlefield 1, that kind of smooth, you just press space and you're over whatever obstacle is in front of you. That so, would be a game changer, because there's so, no there's no Battle Royale modes or games that have that. And I mean, we just want to make that, the fighting is the core mechanic of the game, and the fights between you and another player, and everything else should be smooth, and you shouldn't need to think about it. So, so I will stop dying to people when I'm in a window and they can see me and I can't see them below me and they just shoot up through the window yeah, and kill me. Exactly. That would be nice. So, so I die a lot in your game. As a tank girl, you talk about vehicles. Are you going to add a tank? Well, we're going to have full modding, right? Yeah. So I'm sure people with a, with a, will add tanks. See, see, because, because to me, a mode I would love to see is like a, uh, like, like a, a, a king of the hill or, or, or a king of the crowd mode where the uh -huh. player is in a tank and everyone's going to take down the tank. We had that in Arma 2, I think. I yes, did like did. Battle, the battle Royale with tanks, and it was like we spawned five tanks one end, five tanks the other end, they just went down. And it just, why not? You know, it's. Yeah. The, the game mode is there and it's going to be moddable, so I expect to see all kinds of funny and strange game modes appear. So, as a modder, is it important to you to add full mod support into your game? It's really oh, yeah. important to let like, people kind of create on that platform. For me, the chance I've been given with this game and with H1 and everything, it doesn't happen to, to people who make mods for games, you know? It doesn't you can, happen to anybody. No, I mean, I can list them maybe five. On one hand, the amount of people that have had their games made into a uh, or yeah, mods had their mods made, made into a full standard game. And I want to find like the next guy to do that. Like I want to provide them with a platform that they can experiment and go mad and see what happens. Uh, so, so you're gonna have like official server where stuff isn't necessarily modded. Are you going to have officially sanctioned mods that you can put on your official If we find some great mods that really inspire people, yeah, we'll host them. So Ark did that with the, with I think they took five of their best and they put them on the Xbox. Yeah. I don't know if you have console plans or not. Oh, we do. Yeah. Well, after okay, the so. PC version is relatively stable and finished, we'll be moved to console. Because Ark did a really good job of that. They didn't curate it. They kind of let the audience decide yeah. what the best mods were, and then they just kind of took those and ported them to Xbox. No, I mean it's we we want to like support modders. We want to find the next player. You know, I want to give someone else the chance that I was given. It's... So, I mean, obviously this chance is huge. Let's like to have your game taken. You mod for fun. Like, you don't mod for profit. No one mods for no. profit. So, you know, now you... No, there are some people that mod for profit. That, that's... Those are the bad ones. We'll yeah, you talk get, you get those in, 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 especially like, in Arma and stuff. You see mods that, you know, they're charging for access to that. It's like, come on, guys. It's modding should be... And that's why, like, for me, I think... I started this not to make money, not to be famous. I call myself player unknown because I don't want to be known. You know, it's like I'm that guy that sits in the background and well, makes this stuff. Well, the bad news is nobody yeah. knows you now. I know. Now you're kind of no, famous. But no, it's still kind of good because I'm sitting here sometimes and I hear people talking, oh yeah, player unknown, he's this, this, and I'm sitting here going, yep, you don't know me. Uh, don't even know us up here. Yep, don't notice him here. Don't notice him here. I got followed for an hour by two people who knew me. And they didn't say hello. No, they said hello. They were just following me around. And I mean, technically, I've been following you around the entire yeah. convention. I'm just your boss, so it's not as weird. But no, I mean, I, I just prefer to be a little bit unknown, but yeah, I am player somewhat more known. Than, uh, I mean, your name is on the game, so... Yeah, right. Was that your decision, or was that... The, the so if we were going to call it, like, Player Announce Battle Royale, uh, just having my name in front of it just means I can call it pretty much anything. I can call it, like, Player Announce Battlefield, and not a lot of people can do anything, you know? Yeah. They probably could. 
but I call it Battlegrounds because I like because we're not going to have just Battle Royale, we're going to have like uh, other game modes and other mods uh, and stuff, You jumped so. my next question! <laughs> my next question was literally, are you planning to add more than just the Battle Royale mode? Because I know that other Battle, Roy Battle Royale games, like The Calling and other games, have kind of stalled their development and said, well, we want to focus on this core model. But no, of course, Battle Royale is our core game mode and that's like, I want to fully polish that. But we have it in a good state at the moment. And there's some other, like in Armored 3 I had Street Fight, I had Battle Royale War, I had a few other game modes that worked really well. So I want to put those in as well. You know, I want to put in Street Fight where it's more melee based weapons in a city. We have a new map planned as well which could suit Street Fight a little bit better. But more than anything else, I want to like give the... We're going to have custom games for partners where you can create your own game out on your own server. So, you know, we'll, you'll be able to fuck around with Battle Royale and other game modes. And I want to give these game modes as like templates for people to use going, like, going forward and go, okay, that's how they made this. Now I can make my own game mode based on that. Will be, you'll be allowing people to run modded servers on the side or only dedicated servers? Uh, we're still looking into it. We're thinking probably release some dedicated server code so you can just spin up servers wherever you want on your own box. Uh, we do want like for our ranked servers, we're still looking into that, but like you'll probably have to rent them from us and you get leaderboards and your own part of the website for your league. So how Battlefield did it for a long time? Oh, 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 this is really important for me. I definitely prefer games on Steam. I definitely prefer games on Steam for a little bit of a drop. Would there be, if someone created a monitor, they could add full of physics to the game? Well, we have bullet film physics. Not not perfect yet, but we yeah. have like the it leaves at the correct velocity from real life. We don't have air drive yet, which is the big thing, but we are adding that. You're adding air Oh yeah, no, no, in, in, in gravity fall? Yeah, yeah. Well the air drive will be we have gravity fall already. Stop but because there's table. no there's no air drag, it just doesn't fall very far. Yeah. Right? So what air drag is just a complicated beast to, to yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of mathematics. <laughs> I know, you're are, I know you're right. I know you're right. We are adding air drag, so you will have proper bullet drop. You know, Good. at the moment I there is drop, but it's not a lot. Uh, so how did you decide on weapon diversity? Because your your game has a lot more weapons than say than yours competitor. Yeah. You know, it definitely has a lot more weapon diversity. I mean, you can pick up a scar, you can pick up older bolt action rifles, and also the weapons are moddable. So when you pick up a base weapon, it doesn't have a scope. You know, it doesn't have. You can put a choke on shotguns to make the spread go smaller. You know, you can do things that in, in Battlegrounds you can't do in a lot of other Battle Royale style games. And there also is a, a much less heavy emphasis on melee combat. Yeah. And a much more heavy emphasis on right away you're going to drop in, you're going to pick up a gun. And it's not going to be a pistol, it's going to be a rifle. You know, I don't think I have, I played maybe 50, 60 games. I don't think I ever had a game where I didn't get a gun right off the bat. Oh no, it's not meant to be hard to hear. You know, it's... Battle Royale is a fight between you and your competitor, you know, and it's just, it's the proof who's the best soldier in that moment, you know, depending on, it doesn't matter what weapon you have, you should be able to best that, right? You shouldn't have to go hunting for gear most of the game. Well, no, you, you should have to hunt for better attachments most of the game, so you can put the core... So you can make the methods. perfect gear. Yeah, yeah, so you can make the, the perfect core gear. gear should be relatively easy to find, and it is, I mean, you can get pretty good AOR and a shotgun pretty easily in the first, sometimes you might be unlucky, but that's part of the design so that you're not like gearing up easily every time there are some rounds you're like fuck I can't find a weapon shit you know and what do I do now you know and it's all about just the more replayability the more randomness we have in the game and the more times that every time you spawn in it's not the same stuff every time that's really important for me to, to keep the re replayability there you speak a little bit to weapon damage because it seems like you've got a really high variety of weapon damages in this game oh well now our uh, CS or our lead weapon designer is an ex CSGO pro um, he's really like we have like a hundred different variables for every weapon you know to do a recoil and all these like nitty gritty stuff but when it comes to damage, we still have a lot of tweaking. That's what we're doing early access, so we can really tweak balance and, and you know make sure that every weapon is, is pretty much cool. Uh, but we like the we like the meta that's like with different damage from different weapons because you know maybe you want to rock a shotgun and add an AOR or uh, because of the way that they work together, or you know the SMG and an AOR because SMG is quieter in close combat. And, you know you won't be giving away your position, so we want to give those. Uh, of, of play. Are 
you at all concerned about kind of people falling into a meta? I know I play a little bit, I watch you play a little bit of King of the Kill, and there's definitely a very strong shotgun AK meta in that game. Like, oh yeah, I mean... You run a shotgun and AK, and that's that's it. And then those are the two guns that you get, and you go through the game, with, and then if you can get a drop and get a sniper rifle, you win the game. And that's well, no, pretty much the whole thing. We want to... We will have meta, no doubt. You know, this is the way people will play, but there's such a wide variety that I think you're going to get a lot of it. Like, we have, we'll have Steven achievements to kind of, like, first win with a frying pan, you know? Like, stuff like I, this, that. When I saw the frying pan, I was like, I want to kill someone with this. I haven't yet, but that's one of the coolest things I found in the game so far. I was like, and the sound it makes? Oh my god, did you hit someone in the head with a frying pan to get that sound? Is there some dead body in your studio? Is <laughs> the head came to like, Korea is a great place. You get everything done. We got a guy for that. Huh? Oh no, but it's it's yeah. We love that sound, and we added just a little bit more physics to when you hit them, and they go flying just a little bit further than usual. I was genuinely. I've rarely, rarely. You know, I play a lot of video games, both for work and for fun, and very rarely am I genuinely surprised by sound in a video game because so many developers really just kind of shop out their sound and they don't think about it and they don't worry about it. And I picked up that frying pan and I actually hit the guy next to me with it. It was the solo beta weekend and we, we were doing in the solo weekend. So I hit him with it and he died. And I was like... <laughs> Somewhere on stream there's a video of me maniacally laughing as, as Pirate is dead on the floor from being hit in the head with a, fi with a frying pan. Oh yeah, I mean there's one of the girls here, Sylvest, Genio, whatever her name is, I can't usernames um, but she loves the frying pan like she just runs she just gets it she's running around like a maniacal uh, witch just going ah! it's just fun I mean and you know I think that's something that's missing from a lot of, of a lot of these battle rail style games you know I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that there's been a few that have popped up recently to capitalize on the popularity of H1Z1 oh I know and you know we get a few you know we used to be back in the day we'd get free mods you know and you're, you're all you've been in the modding scene forever so you remember what it was like in the 90s and the early 2000s where Monty B, there'd be 15 mods up for a game and they'd all be free. And yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, modding used to be great. And, like, even, like, it's like, just lately, because of, especially with open world modding, there is the chance there for you to sell in games, you know, be it skins or currency, because you have a persistent open world. And people, like, servers cost money. Like, I pay for the Arma 3 servers. To this day, out of my own pocket, I spend close to two thousand dollars every month just to keep the servers alive right but i don't mind that because h1 has been good to me um you know now i'm making my own game so i've been lucky so i get a chance to give back to the community but most modders they have a popular server but they just will not most modders that's a bad thing to say like a few modders so. a few bad eggs uh like some of the like especially in Arma 3 like the uh, life servers like some of them clear like thousands if not more every month from well, like donations for you know that before Notch left Minecraft he, he slid a clause into the EULA that said you can't profit off my game anymore because what was happening was people were opening Minecraft servers and charging thousands of dollars to 10 year olds who would grab mom's credit card oh, and yeah. charge 10 grand like my daughter plays fucking Minecraft you know and it's right. like I will like I have told her they, they would do not spend money on the internet ever like just right. for games if you can't achieve it by just playing well it's not worth playing you know yeah they so. make it that hard that you have to buy something to move on <laughs> no um. so we can expect that Battlegrounds will not have uh, any type of pay to win system there oh no we're gonna have crates so like cosmetic crates and um, we're gonna shape it we're trying to create like a good skin economy so we're going to be using the same marketplace and it's important for us to have proper rarity of skins so that people can not profit from playing the game but they can be rewarded for if i get this case for playing x number of hours and i open it and i get a 200 dollars skin i want to be able to do that you know i think having a strong economy i was really worried when a lot of the CSGO betting sites were out. Oh, yeah. That's going to be my next question. Be taking steps to prevent well, the CSGO betting sites? Valve like have I taken those steps. But are you guys personally going to make sure that you're using third party stuff? I'm gonna, we're going to try our best. I mean, Valve have been good because they've stepped up and gone, nah, you're not using uh, CSGO for betting. You know, there are still sites that are betting on matches, but there's not much we can do about that. But when it comes to skin betting, they 
relatively of stock now. So I mean, there's a, there's literally a booth here that is about betting on games. I can't believe Pax let them in. I saw it over there, Rope Bull something. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, this is a gambling website, yeah. and they have a booth at Pax where there are oh, children. No, no booth girls, but fucking betting's okay. <laughs> Like, come on, guys, really? Like, and they're not getting any kickback in the press. They're gonna have I'm writing an opinion piece I know, about that. I, I, was, I saw the betting and I was like, you can't be encouraging that. And they have a big booth. Kids. They have a huge booth and it's switch purple. Like, talk about like we're just trying to associate ourselves here. I know there's a lot yeah. of money in it, but come on, guys. There really is. But no, when it comes to our cosmetics, there won't be any pay to win. It's just gonna be like for our first real, well, we have a crate at the moment, the Pioneer crate, you get those beta. That's just a range of clothing. But we have another crate coming, which is like a Battle Royale crate as a tribute to the movie. So like in our art there, you see like, you know the movie Battle Royale, right? So yeah. we have the Takeshi Takano character, his like, or his, um, tracksuit, the girl in the yellow tracksuit, we've got the, the oh yeah, all the, the main characters, like the pink lady, or the purple lady on the bus that knocks them all out with her gas mask, all these characters, like, you, you can win these skins. That's and really cool. we're not going to cool. be monetizing during early access, so we do, do a system where you can buy key or crates using in-game grow points or battle points, and then you can leave them, and we're still considering this, so it's not 100% yet, but they may unlock over time, or you can buy a key to just unlock them, right? And keep it simple like that.